So, yesterday there has been an announcement that has shocked the world that has been going pretty viral about Devin, the first AI software engineer. And apparently he's pretty good. Apparently he's as good as being able to pass actual engineering interviews. And just imagine, you're conducting the interview, you're the interviewer, and then this goofy ass AI named Devin joins the chat and wants to do the interview. Anyways, and according to the announcement, he can also do real jobs on Upwork. And in this video, together with you, I want to find out what's behind the hype. Is Devin actually good enough to replace us all and is it time for us to discuss alternative career options with the boys? Now, the company behind Devin is Cognition Labs and listen man, I don't know about you, but I've never heard of that company before this announcement. They seem like a super new thing, even having joined Twitter as late as January 2024. Even the content on their YouTube channel is like at most a couple hours old, which to me seems like they just kind of locked themselves in a basement for years without any any kind of communication to the outside world just to launch this thing into the world without elaborating. And you gotta give it to him, it worked. They've already secured $21 million in funding led by the Founders Fund, which is a San Francisco based fund with a fancy website, so you know it must be good. Now, what's especially impressive, at least to me, is the claimed performance of Devin on the SWE bench benchmark. And if you don't know what that is, like me before, it's a measure to evaluate large language models on real world issues that you collect from open source repositories on GitHub. And then the model gets a code base, any random open source code base, and gets an issue. And is then tasked with solving that issue, generating kind of like a fix for a problem in the code. And it all boils down to the model writing code that passes unit tests. And if all unit tests run successfully, the model gets a score of 1. And if code written by the model doesn't pass the unit test, if it fails at any point, then it gets a score of 0. And in this benchmark, Devin can solve about three times as many problems unassisted, by the way, no human intervention than any other model. So in total, about 13.8% of problems that it gets can be solved without any human assistance. And at first, 13.8% might not seem like a lot it still needs a lot of assistance. But just remember where we were a year ago when Midjourney wasn't even able to create hands on the images it generates and where we are now where that kind of perfectly works fine. And dude, who could have been happier about this announcement than software engineers? They see the beautiful opportunities and endless possibilities that come with Devin. They see him as the gift to the community that he is always friendly and ready to help out with your coding problems. Hey, wait a minute, people People are kind of pissed off. Well, who could have thought that people don't love the technology that could one day replace them? And I say could, not will. Let's take a look at the demos they posted that show what Devin can do, what it's able to solve, and you be the judge. So here's the entire announcement from Cognition Lab introducing Devin. And there's some parts in here we've already talked about, like the job interviews it has done or the Upwork work. But what we haven't talked about yet is that it has a built-in shell, code editor, and web browser. And GPT already had the capabilities to execute Python, and Devin takes that a lot further. But much more interesting is the demo of Devin. What can it do? How does it look like to interact with it? So on the left-hand side, we have the chat interface where we can ask questions post or code for example and on the right side we can see four things the shell the browser the editor and the planner and the planner is kind of like an internal list for Devin of tasks that it goes through in the code editing process by the way that can take up to a couple minutes but all things considered that's still not super long the web browser to search through documentation and then the shell to actually execute the code and really quick this is actually live on the internet we can go ahead to devin.ai and it looks like we can already asked Devin something like hello Devin the problem is no it doesn't actually work it's still behind the waitlist so we can't actually prove that Devin is good or bad or whatever because it's not public access yet but what we can tell from the demo this right here is the planner where Devin has like a list of tasks research the API documentation for replicate and so on and so on write a python script implement response time measurement and so on that it goes through sequentially it can execute the code in the shell and 
by doing that, it can solve code problems one at a time. And as we can see right here in the bottom right corner, we can also give it custom environment variables that it can use to interact with the API. So it's not limited to free to use APIs at all. It even got the documentation open for the websites it's trying to solve the code for. And we can also, during the whole thing, interact with Devin and ask it more questions. That's pretty cool. As a first demo, that's really neat. But they also posted four specific videos of what it can do. The first demo is this one. Devin can learn how to use unfamiliar technologies. This is an image generator that has like hidden text inside of it, where this says, I guess, Sarah, for example, but it's kind of hidden in the image. And basically she asked Devin to build something like it. And it did. That's pretty impressive. Second example is Devon can contribute to mature production repositories. In real world enterprise scenarios, this is likely the best one because it can learn the repository and then answer questions from senior engineers, from junior engineers about the repository and also kind of help with the code base. Rarely you're gonna have the case where Devin independently makes pull requests to your repo and adds features. At least right now, that is nowhere near realistic. And it will even ask us right here, please provide the GitHub username and password to push the changes to the repository. I cannot think of anything that could possibly go wrong with that. Third example is Devin can train and fine tune its own AI models. That's cool. I don't think it's too interesting, so I'm not gonna go too, too deep into it, but essentially maybe Devin can one day create a better Devon and it's going to be Devonception. And then fourth one is we even tried giving Devon real jobs on Upwork and it could do those too. And for me, this is one of the most impressive, but I don't know how cherry picked this example is. For all I know, this could be the one thing it does well, right? We can't tell if it's not public access, but just the idea of it doing Upwork stuff seems pretty impressive. But also, I think Jack Harrington said it very well, the history of AI thus far has been making outrageous promises and then being entirely underwhelming in reality. And that is setting the bar at close enough is good enough, which is not production ready on any job I've had. And you know what? I 100% agree. At my previous job, at my current job, no way AI would be insanely helpful. Maybe Devin will be. And I commented even here, it's absolute ass for anything software related. And by that, I mean ChatGPT, mostly any coding tool that is AI that I've tried, they are not good for anything that's not super obvious, very basic algorithmic stuff they can do. But also Devin can code Chrome extensions. So it's not public access yet, but you can ask the creator stuff. Like for example, this guy asked if it could build a Chrome extension that they've built. And then the creator's cognition lab sent a video of Devin doing just that. Now, is this cherry picked? Again, very, very hard to tell. But you can kind of see the process here, even though the resolution is very bad. I think that's because of Twitter. But you can see Devin go through the process of creating that Chrome extension. Now, this entire thing, of course, is not without criticism, especially from software developers. Meet Devin, the world's first AI developer. We've raised 21 million, but can't use Devin to make a web app for onboarding. So we used Google Forms instead. Like bros just going pretty hard on Google Forms. There's nothing wrong with Google Forms. They're pretty solid to be honest, but you know, understandable criticism, whatever. What I found funny is if you head over to the Cognition Labs website, they have three open positions like a machine learning researcher, a general application, and also a software engineer. So maybe Devin is not as good as replacing internal people yet. Maybe you still need humans. Very apparently you still need humans and can't just offload all the work to an AI. At least yet. Anyways, just like with previous large language models, I think the main purpose is helping us software developers find solutions faster and being helpful in very certain code scenarios. Like calculators didn't change the need for human mathematicians. They just kind of shifted the focus for human work to be more high level. And for software engineers, that could be more application planning and software design rather than actual coding. But again, with the current state of AI, even with Devon with its 13.8% unassisted, we are far from any kind of replacement. I guess that's just my two cents though. You are totally fine to disagree with me. If you do, share your thoughts down in the comments. And that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna see you in the next video. Until then, have a good one and bye-bye.